Hello everyone, welcome to this artist talk series, Talks in Three Parts. The second episode, Exploring Cross-Disciplinary Collaboration. My name is Chi Yong Wong. I am an installation artist and an artist curator. In the last episode, I talked about the background of my artistic practice and my research on mindfulness and mental health awareness. I was talking about how I explored different roads to allow me to research about mental health awareness and art, exchange with different disciplines, and create art projects, which at the end contribute to the growth of my artistic practice. In this second episode, I will dive into this roles, sharing with you how I was exploring and developing this collaboration. What are the aims and objectives, and what are the results? I hope this sharing will give you some example how artists convey their exploration into artistic practice. Here is the overview. The first role was working as a resident artist to develop exchange with scientists. The second role was working as a guest speaker or a visiting artist to host workshops and seminars. And the third role was going back to be an artist to create installations. Before we dive into each of these roles, you can use this talk series as a case study to think about this question: How do we bring growth to our practice through cross-disciplinary collaboration, or how art science collaboration will change the way we look for new knowledge? Now we do a deep dive. The first role I was exploring was working as a resident artist in the Artist in Labs program from Switzerland, exploring how to develop exchange activities with neuroscientists and psychiatrists. My residency was facilitated by the Artist in Lab program from the Zurich University of the Arts. With their support, I was able to collaborate with the scientists. They came from the University of Zurich, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, also known as ETH, and the Sanatorium Kreuzberg. The Artist in Labs program takes care of all the arrangement for the artists to work with the scientific community in their lab during a three to six months period. The mission of the Artist in Lab program is to promote exchange between artists and scientists, and they share the results through their exhibitions, publications, forums, and short documentary films. During my residency, I was working with the scientists from the Translational Neural Imaging Unit from the ETH University. When we started, we have to face the challenge of our differences between artistic methods and scientific methods, because these two disciplines have their own set of paradigm to invent or discover knowledge. However, I try to build up and approach our collaboration by asking questions that could interest them, such as. How art could be a resources for stress reductions, and what are the essential factors for a successful art science collaboration? After working with them for six months, here is the model that we have developed it to build up our conversations and collaboration. We focused on creating four major activities as the pillars. To support our exchange, the first pillar was the weekly workshops. The aim was to exchange our professional practices. I would invite the scientists to share the research that might be related to mindfulness, and I would share my hypothesis how art could have an impact on stress reduction. The second pillar was collaborating prototypes. We picked up a scientific prototype to brainstorm the creative possibility. 
For example, we picked up one of the VR prototypes they have been working on, and I suggested an additional artistic scenario with conceptual change of colors and light. And of course, we follow all the objectives of this prototype. Meanwhile, we picked up the art installations I was working on and invited the scientists to brainstorm the possibility of the art's work to become a scientific tool. For example, we used my experiential installation as a case study for us to discuss how to combine our different views into creating an installation that could be an intervention for stress reduction. The third pillar was to visit and interview the other scientific experts. To understand how they worked and collaborate in an interdisciplinary environment, and how they research the topic of stress or mindfulness. These experts are neurologists, neuroscientists, computational psychologists, engineers, new imaging experts, mathematicians, and physicists. Through their sharing, our discussion helped us to further understand each other's research and methods. This helped us to align our perspective and go to found solutions for mental health improvement. The fourth pillar was also one of the most interesting parts, which was to be a control subject in the experiment. To understand the research method, the technology being used behind the research. This was the moment I learned a lot about biofeedback training, which later has a huge impact on my final installation. The second role I was exploring was a speaker or a visiting artist to host workshops and seminars in different institutes. Because this role allowed me to reflect my research, at the same time it helped promoting exchange with the educational community. In the past few years, I was very fortunate to be invited by different institutes and art organizations. For example, this seminar was in collaboration with the Res Kowloon right after my residency. Through hosting this workshop, we used my project as a case study. We talked about the future of the art science collaboration in the Hong Kong art scene. And last year, I was invited by the Yale University to be one of their art fellows. This further helped me to continue my research working with their art science experts. At the same time, I was able to host workshop with the student to share my experiences and topics on experiential installation and cost disciplinary arts. Through this kind of workshops and seminar, we created a triangle exchange between art education and research. And finally, the role that I have been exploring my whole life is how to be an installation artist. My objectives are very straightforward, which are to reflect my research and my experience through artistic creations and to share with the community. For instance, I drew inspiration from working with the neuroscientists. They introduced to me about how biofeedback therapy can help us to train our thoughts to manage our body. And there are visual or audio cues designed to guide the user to train their breathing rhythm in order to relax their thoughts and muscles. I brainstorm with the scientists what if I create some gentle change of light and color as a visual cue in my installation, allowing the participants to calmly immerse themselves into a contemplative state. And the scientists can check if this kind of artistic interventions could have a therapeutic effect on stress reduction. The response from the neuroscientists was very positive, and in our final exit interview, one of the scientists mentioned that our exchange also inspired her to check out how to make use of the art of light in her future research. Cross-disciplinary collaboration with scientists allowed us to share different perspectives when looking at mindfulness. At the same time, this experience encouraged me to rethink my creative process and how to re-question myself. 
my role as an artist. Why do I do the things that I do? What is my paradigm of creative thinking? However, when I create my installation, I become more aware of how to create audiovisual elements and tactile interactions to formulate this contemplative space. Which can gently immerse the visitor to become mindful of their senses, and allow them to create headspace to observe their own thoughts and emotions, similar to what biofeedback training allows us to do. Before we come to the end of this episode, the following is an excerpt of the installation. It helps you to get an idea how it was made. To conclude, this installation, I use soundscape, music, light, and color to try to gently let the visitor enter into their own psychological flow, and to connect the senses with the present moment. My goal was to create a space where the visitor can take a moment to be idle, to find their own space of peace, and just to observe and to be curious. This is also the principle of mindfulness practice: to slow down, to observe, to focus on the present moment without any judgment, and engage themselves into introspection. And after this installation, I was very lucky to be invited to create a few other projects, 
so that I could try to establish different kinds of cross-disciplinary collaboration. For example, I recently worked with the media artist Thomas Yip. We adapted this physical experiential installation into digital art. Now we have come to the end of the second episode. I hope my sharing could give you some references or inspirations. You can also spend a few minutes to think about this question. How do we bring growth to our practice through cross-disciplinary collaboration? In the next episode, Exploring Creative Technology, I will talk about how I explore coding technology with creative technologist Marcus Nan Singer to create a virtual art project, Auguries of Innocence. This artwork is also a new chapter of my exploration on mindfulness and experiential art. Remember to check out the artwork in our website and you can find the information below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.